Good morning class. Welcome to Full Syllabus channel. Now let's see the next oxidizing agent that is DDQ. DDQ means dicyano dichloroquinone. That means it will be having 2Cl and 2Cn groups. Dichloro dicyano quinone. It can show oxidation reaction by itself reducing and oxidizing the substrates. The various type of reactions it shows contain aromatization, aromatization of those compounds which are cyclic in nature and can be aromatized. Many compounds such as porphyrins, such as naphthalene derivatives which are reduced in nature can be oxidized via DDQ. The second type of Application is preparation of salts. Preparation of stable salts of aromatic compounds can be prepared with the help of DDQ. Third application is oxidative cyclization and in its a smaller version, intermolecular cyclization will also be discussed in which the cyclization will be occurring within the molecule itself. The fourth category is oxidation of phenols. And the last category of application we will be discussing is oxidation of benzylic or allylic group. Now, let's start with the first category, guys. The first category, as I told you, was aromatization. It deals with two steps. The mechanism deals with two steps. The first step is transfer of hydride ion. And the second step is the transfer of proton to the phenolate ion that is formed in between. So, if I can show you, this proton will be shifting to the oxygen of DDQ and a cyclization of pi bonds will be taking place in the first step and this kind of carbocation will be formed. In the second step, this proton will be transferred to the O negative and a bond will be formed here. In this whole procedure, we can aromatize various kind of molecules. Macromolecules are also being oxidized by this method, such as porphyrins are being oxidized by this method. There are many steroids which are oxidized by this method by using DDQ. Now see the first case in which this, mole this part of the molecule is non-aromatic in nature. DDQ will do its oxidation or I will basically say it will aromatize it. In the second part also or in the second question also same kind of aromatization is seen in the molecule. So I will deal up with the third molecule and its mechanism so you can make the mechanism for the above cases also by yourself. Try that at home. Now, let's start with this molecule and why it is an exception, I will tell you in the way I solve the question. Now, if this is your molecule and as we saw in the mechanism that a hydride shift takes place. So, this kind of hydride shift will be taking place from this uh, position of carbon and this will approach the oxygen in the way the pi bonds will move like this and a carbocation will be generated. The adjacent carbon proton will be lost and a double bond will be formed. After formation of this kind of molecule, if these two CH3s are not present, the same can happen here and a naphthalene molecule will be, uh, will be uh, coming out as a product. But in this, because of these three, uh, two CH3 molecules, or fragment I better say present there it will give a rearrangement first of all the first step will be the same that a hydride ion will be lost to the DDQ molecule and a positive charge will be created here if there will be a proton here instead of CH3 that proton will be leaving and a double bond will be forming but as in this case I am saying it's an exception there are two CH3 groups so First of all, a CH3 will migrate to this positive charge, show a methyl shift. And now the positive charge occurs here. Instead of it is 
happening here in this molecule due to this shift the positive charge is now here right class this place has h or a proton present now this h will leave and double bond will be forming here so instead of getting one one dimethyl compound we will be getting one two dimethyl naphthalene as our product now let's study the next type of usage for ddq the next usage of ddq is with specific type of acids which make stable salt as such one example of that acid is perchloric acid these kind of compounds which have one sp3 hybridized carbon basically can re loss can lose its h as hydride ion and a positive charged carbon or a carbocation will be formed which can undergo resonance hence these three carbons will be having that positive charge and a salt with form a salt will be formed with the acid HClO4 that is perchloric acid is used because these kind of salts are more stable in nature now again with this kind of molecule as you can see this carbon is sp3 hybridized so if hydride abstraction will take place with the help of ddq this will be having a positive charge or you can say it will be a carbocation formation taking place and as i told you above perchloric acid will be forming a stable salt with this kind of molecule after carbocation will be forming with ddq this was my second usage now let's go to the third one oxidative cyclization or if it is in a molecule the cyclization occurring it is called intramolecular cyclization both will mean the same okay i am dealing with three cases but i will deal only the mechanism of the last one the rest two you will do at home that's a homework for you and i will give it give that as assignment okay class now this is my molecule so what will be happening there will be a formation of five membered or a six membered chain occurring first of all ddq will be abstracting a proton from a place where it is active in nature here two phenyl ring and it is also attached to a naphthalene ring so this proton is very much active in nature hence can be abstracted so a positive charge will be developing here as the hydride will be going from here this positive charge carbon will be attacked by the oxygen of the carboxylic acid group and this kind of structure will be formed same in this case exactly same in this case is will be happening okay class oh, there is a you can just ha huh, now exactly the same case will be happening here also this proton will be allylic in nature will be acidic in nature now you will deal with its mechanism and i will do that in the next class shortly this is the last case in which again you can see 2 ph and this benzene will make this proton acidic in this case same 2 ph and this will make this proton acidic one phenyl and allyl ring uh, and uh, uh, alkene bond will make this proton acidic and here this proton will be acidic this will form a carbocation which will be attacked by the ch2 and a five membered ring will be produced now let's do the mechanism of the oxidative cyclization reaction if this is our molecule as we know this proton will be acidic in nature due to the presence of three phenyl rings so ddq will abstract this proton as hydride and a carbocation will be formed this double bond will attack the positively charged carbocation and a ring will be formed that will be five membered in nature and a positive charge will develop on the carbon of the alkene which will be this carbon as this will be getting attached to this carbon so this carbon will be having a positive charge as shown here now the second step of aromatization as we have learnt in the first type of reaction this proton will be leaving as 
H plus and will be getting to the phenoxide ion of the DDQ. Hence, a double bond will be produced here and an intramolecular cyclization uh, can be seen as in this case. Now, let's go to the next usage that is oxidation of phenol. Let's discuss the next application that is oxidation of phenols. In oxidation of phenols, the mechanism follows is a little different different because the OH can leave the O and H homolytically. That means that H radical will be lost and be taken by DDQ and O radical will be formed which will, will be cyclized to form a quinone like structure. If your para position is free then this kind of quinone will be formed in which two two molecules will be cyclized together but if your para position is not free then a O radical that is formed of DDQ in this case remember O negative is not formed O radical is formed that will be making a bond with the para position and quinone type of homoiety won't be forming so if your para position is free then CC coupling occurs else CO coupling will be taking place in the case of phenols. As we are on the last application of TDQ that is oxidation of benzylic or allylic group. Now what is a benzylic or allylic group? Benzylic group is the one which is attached to a benzene ring. So this is a benzylic group or a benzylic carbon. If instead of a benzene ring there is a double bond there that will be called a allylic group. So the benzylic or allylic group is oxidized by DDQ to double bond O. And if with the DDQ we are using acetic acid, we will be getting OAC. A ether will be formed instead of ketone. Now, let's do the mechanism of the reaction. If this kind of molecule will be there, as you know, due to the presence of benzene ring, this can lose its H as hydride and a carbocation will be formed which can be attacked by water. In this case water can be used as a attacking species after DDQ abstraction of hydride. Okay so a catalytic amount of water is added not a full amount and this kind of OH is produced which will again with the help of DDQ being converted to or ketone ring. Instead of water, if acetic acid is used, this will be not OH, this will be OAC and the reaction will be stopping at this step only, a ketone won't be formed. Class, as we have over all the application of TDQ, now I am giving you a small homework to do at home. Let's show the homework given to you for the last assignment, selenium dioxide. This was our first question. As we know, ki if carbonyl compound is there, then the carbon attached to it, that is the alpha carbon, is oxidized to carbonyl and a CO bond will be formed. This kind of dicarbonyl compound will be seen as a product. In the next case, it is again a carbonyl compound and a CH3 is present and a CH is present. As you know, CH3 has more ease to get oxidized than CH, hence this will be the product that is formed. In this case, there are two alkenes. So as we know, out of the two alkenes, which one that is electron rich in nature will get oxidized? That is, this alkene will get oxidized instead of this one. So, this alkene will be oxidizing on the more substituted side, that means this side. Out of these two, this will be giving you E-selective product, that is your rule number 1 and rule number 2. Both will be followed and this will be your E product that will be formed. This is number 1, this is number 1, both are opposite in priorities, that why E-selectivity product is formed. In the last one, last second sorry this carbonyl compound has alpha here and here as this don't have a ch but this has a ch2 that means two protons are present hence this carbon will be getting oxidized and this product will be formed in the last case as you know again these two are the alpha carbons this carbon has two ch two ch uh, two protons and this has only one 
H. Hence, this will be getting oxidized to carbonyl and this will be your product. Now, I will be waiting for you for the next class with the solved answers for DDQ.